to do some magic chart. As I understand it, some of you are already experts with this chart, so if you already know everything, it might be safe to skip this video. But if you're interested in hearing, hearing how we're going to look at this, continue and watch on. So we're dealing with air that has humidity, or an air-water vapor mixture. We have several different variables. We have an enthalpy of a mixture. We have the specific humidity. We have the relative humidity. We have a dry bulb temperature. We have a wet bulb temperature. And we have a specific volume of the mixture. Now there's so many different variables here but really we only need two of them to define the system. From any two we can calculate all the others. So a statement could be made about a vector space of humid air and linear independence but to be honest you guys are more experts at that sort of thing than I am. We have a graphical way of making the calculations somewhat simple. The graphical way is the psychrometric chart. So I'll pull that up here. Here's the psychrometric chart. This has all the different variables on it and knowing two we can calculate all the others. So let's see how, how we can explain this. Let's look at a simplified version here. On the horizontal axis you have you have the dry bulb temperature. On the vertical axis you have the specific humidity. Now on the chart there's a whole bunch of lines. Some of those lines are lines of constant relative humidity. You have lines of constant wet bulb temperature lines of constant enthalpy, and lines of constant specific volume. Let's pull up another, another graph here. We have, we have the saturation line going along, all along here, which is, which is the line of 100% relative humidity. This is where the system is completely saturated. If you pick one point along the saturation line, if you go horizontally across, then you have a constant dew point. If you go vertically down, you have a constant dry bulb temperature. And if you go along this line, you have a constant wet bulb temperature. So let's go back and look at the actual chart. So here's our chart. It's kind of hard to see with all these lines in here. So let's zoom in on, on a closer area. Okay, so let's, let's say we had a situation with a wet bulb temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. So we have wet bulb temperature 15 degrees Celsius. And dry bulb temperature of let's say 25 degrees Celsius. And we want to find some other property. Let's say we want to find the relative humidity. Well, we start, we start at this 15. This black dashed line is a constant wet bulb temperature. So we'll draw this line in as best if we can. Maybe if you have a ruler, that'll make it easier for you than it is for me. Now for the dry bulb temperature, that's 25 degrees, which is right here. This is 20, 25, 30. So we'll extend, it's 25 uh, up here. 
Now the point we're really interested in is the intersection point, right here. So if we have a wet bulb temperature of 15 and a dry bulb temperature of 25, this is the point where you are right now. So the relative humidities given by these, these pink curves here, you have 30% line here, 40% line here. This is part way in between. Mm, let's say it's maybe a third of the way in between. So we can approximate that this is 33% relative humidity. Okay, let's pick maybe a different example. Let's say we have, we know our relative humidity is 50% and we know that the wet bulb temperature is equal to 20 degrees Celsius and what is the dry bulb temperature? Okay, so here's the 50% relative humidity line all along here. And we know the wet bulb temperature is 20. That's this line here. So we know our point of intersection is right here. And now, if I pick some color, draw a line going down. And that's almost right in the middle. Let's say that's 27.5. So the dry bulb temperature is 27.5 degrees Celsius. So that's pretty much all there is to the psychometric chart. It's a handy graphical tool to find, to find other data given to data points. Let's look at something else a bit interesting here. I pulled this up off the internet. I think it's from the Autodesk website, makers of AutoCAD. Here they show a psychometric chart and it's showing this comfort zone in here. So this comfort zone is what's comfortable for human living. So this is where we are comfortable, what we like to be in. This gray zone all in here is actual temperature of, or the actual temperature and humidity of outside air. So as you see, outside air is a lot bigger range than the comfort zone. So the goal of an air conditioning system or a heating system is to take outside air and condition it so that it's inside this comfort zone.